All right, we're finna get into this this esoteric download about these mirrors. Um, I know many of us have been told fallacies about mirrors. There are many different types of mirrors, and um, you got concave mirrors, single mirrors, one way mirrors. Um, but that's neither here nor there because today we're gonna talk about the essence of mirrors. So before we dive into it, it's imperative that I open up this divine download with the right spiritual energy so first let me start by once again saying peace to all the gods and goddesses of planet kai peace meaning positive energy always creates elevation to all the elders in the university 65 and old i'm sending you the, the deepest of insight to all of my peers in their 20s 30s 40s 50s i'm sending you the deepest of insight um and to all the blue crystal babies that's in the university i'm sending you the deepest of insight to really grasp this download today and once again um for those of you who just walked in, I want to apologize for this download just now hitting the website because it was a couple weeks before we gave it. And then the last time we gave this download, um, I was informed after the download that it was actually deleted right after the meditation, you know, the, how we open it up. So we here today. Once again, we back and talk about it. So let's let's get into mirrors, though. All right. So. um, I want you to take this download serious, right? Not saying that you don't take every download serious, but definitely focus on the words I'm saying today. I want you to notice that normally you don't see me bring a pink candle on, all right? But I specifically chose this style of quartz, which you should know what it is. I don't have to verbalize what type of um, crystal this is. Um, and we will be doing a, a lectures coming up on the website this month, um, an introduction to crystals. But um, notice the type of crystal that I'm using today. And notice the candle I'm using. I'm using a pink candle. Uh, why did I chose to choose to use these elements today? Well, I chose to use these elements in these colors because these colors represent divine love. All right. Um, you have to understand that when you're dealing with certain subject matters, we give we give the power to everything with our words. Remember that we have we have the souls. All right. We are the ancient beings, so we give life to everything. All right, so a lot of things cannot exist without us believing in it, donating our energy to it, or donating our vibration to it with our words. Okay, this is why spell casting is a very dangerous thing. But mirrors, uh, when you're dealing with mirrors, you're dealing with you're dealing with fallen entities. All right, it's imperative that you understand what what mirrors are. All right, um, mirrors come from the fallen realms. Okay, this is home of the fallen angels. Is one of one of the greatest tricks. That the elites or or Satan himself ever used was to put the, was to get us to put these mirrors into our homes. All right, all right. So anciently, the mirrors we had, we didn't use glass. Okay, we used water. We used natural reflectors to reflect our image back to us. This is where the I whole idea of today's mirror even comes from. It comes from the ancient way that we practice reflection. Okay, we always looked at the water to 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 interpret, to do divination work, and when we needed to get a reflection of our image, we would create water. We would create waterways in front of us because we were more tuned to elements. If we didn't create river falls or waterways in front of us, so what's a waterway? A waterway is basically when you tap into the element of water and you create just a nice flow, like a nice um, waterfall of water, but in front of you. But it's not connected to like nothing solid. It's connected strictly to the astral realms, okay? Because water is all as pervasive all throughout the cosmos. So we would do it that way. Or when we was down here in the physical, if we happen to come down here or go to another planet um, and, 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 and manifest physically, we always use the natural water, all right? When you go to a pond, when you go to a lake, the water gives you a natural reflection of yourself, okay? Also, a certain crystals that we use that will give us natural reflections of ourselves. You can look at yourself in the hematite crystal, all right? Certain certain quartz crystals you can look at yourself in. So this is the ancient way of using a mirror. Now, the new mirrors that we know, the ones we see that we put in the houses, the ones we see in our bathrooms, the ones that, that, that people keep in their pocket to look at their reflection, these are all negative entities that, that, that frequent these holographic worlds because these images... These mirrors were made out of glass, okay? And in the, in the understand what, what glass, what is glass made out of? Glass is made out of sand, okay? But what type of sand? Silica sand to be exact. 
Now, if you used to pull out your MacBook and go to what is silica sand, Google says silica sand is a granular material that contains, I got it pulled up right here. Silica sand is a granular material that contains quartz crystals and, and min minimum amounts of coal, clay, and other minerals. Okay? It's also known as quartz sand and industrial sand and it's largely used in several construction applications the presence of silica sand on metal materials can be a source of crevice corrosion on those metals pay attention to that silica sand is a bad thing all right metal is natural you have metal in you notice how the last sentence says that the presence of silica sand on metal materials can be a source of crevice meaning it will lead to corrosion of the metals okay so i don't need that for all right, so you can eat it. Don't need that anymore. All right, so I was just telling you that the mirrors we have today are made out of glass. And the specific glass that are used for mirrors, that glass is made out of silica sand. Okay, silica sand is a form of quartz, but it's one of the quartz that they were able to get their hands on. And they, they, they remember, they have a lot of our enchantments and our spells. So what they did was... When they was working with the Moors, they sat down and they did a lot of uh, 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 what's called alchemy. All right. Now, you got two different forms of alchemy. You got mental alchemy, which is the ability to transmute situations. All right. So let's say somebody sent bad energy your way. When you take that bad energy, you're able to transmute it and turn it into a good thing or use it to your benefit. That's called mental alchemy. However, the original alchemy, though, because mental alchemy is a more advanced form of, of magic. Right. In alchemy. Basic alchemy is the ability to transmit base metals to gold or to transmute any any metal into whatever you want it to be. All right, for that matter. So you have to understand that they were using alchemy to transmute our certain quartz crystals that we had. Now they couldn't do it with what with, with majority of our crystals, but some of the lower vibratory crystals they were able to do it with. All right. Um so what they were doing was, once they were able to transmute it, they were able to 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 create a, a alternate realm to mimic this realm, but with intelligence. Okay. So when you think of a mirror, a mirror has intelligence. A lot of people do not are not aware of how much intelligence that a mirror actually possesses, but it has a lot of intelligence. Okay. And mirrors are occupied and full of fallen angels tricksters gypsies and genies all right the exact genies that that live in mirrors would be the red genies to be exact because the red genies are some of the most low vibrational or what we like to call evil genies of the genies you got three different type of genies okay and for those individuals that you that you know maybe grew up in the islamic religion you call them jinn in islam but this this is a real thing these are these are fall, fallen entities malevolent Malevolent spiritual beings, all right? They call them jinn in Arabic. They call them jinn in the Islamic religion, but we might know them as genies, okay? You got three types of genies. You got green genies, you got blue genies, and you got red genies. The blue genies are the good genies. Most of the blue genies, they're, they, they are like, you know, they can be tricksters too, but they are mostly big on actually fulfilling the wishes of human beings, all right? The God species, we didn't ever have to go to the genies for no source of help because we create just like the genies can create. So a lot, this is why they get the whole, this is where they get the whole idea of Aladdin from. Okay? Of Aladdin from. All right. And remember, what did what what did Aladdin do? What was the genie? And the genie was in what? That little kettle. And when he first rubbed it, he seen his reflection, a mirror image of himself before he even opened it up to let the genie out. Okay? Now, you got green genies. Green genies deal in filth. They normally, they, they're not inside the mirrors. They're not inside the mirror realm. The green genies like to be in your home, wherever it's a lot of trash, wherever it's a lot of, a, a lot of filth, all right? Wherever it's a lot of bad hygiene at, that's where you're going to find the green genies at. That's what they bask in, and they love depression, all right? So whenever you see a lot of people, people real deep in depression, you got to understand those are green genies that are really working on them. The green genies are the ones that actually deal with what we know as depression. All right. They're the ones who, who create that source of energy. All right. And they also are the ones that, that play a heavy part in, in talking souls, tricking souls into committing suicide. 
These are your green genies, right? Now, your red genies are the ones that live inside the mirrors. These are some of the most evil genies, right? Because they are tricksters too, but they are malevolent beings, unlike the blue genies that can go either way. And when you're dealing with these mirrors, you are not looking at your true reflection, all right? You have genies who are shooting a reflection back towards you of, of what they want you to see of yourself, all right? That's why there's an ancient saying that says, hey, when you look in the mirror, you're looking at how you look 10 minutes ago, all right? That's what they tell you about mirrors, all right? But these genies live within these mirrors, right? Not just genies, but some of the more powerful fallen entities, right? And they like and, and and they like to lure souls into the into that holographic realm. This is why. What is it called when a person loves to stay in the mirror? What do we say about that person? We call that vanity, right? Like he's that's a vain individual. That's a narcissist. They love themselves so much. They always in the mirror. Well, most people that that have that issue is not that that they are loving themselves. They have fell under the spell of these rare genies. All right. And these fallen entities that live within the mirror. All right. Why do you think some of the most horrific movies that ever come out involve mirrors? All right. You have poltergeists that involved mirrors. Okay. Because mirrors are the how are, are lead to holographic realms and dimensions. All right. Remember what they are made out of silica sand. Okay, silica sand is made out of a quartz that has been transmuted for it for into a negative frequency. All right. So you have movies like Candyman. In order to summon him, he was a he was a demonic uh, 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 he was a a satanic force. In order to summon Candyman, what did they have to do? They had to go look in the mirror, say his name five times with the lights off. The same thing with the ancient story of Bloody Mary. For those who remember that, when we was kids. You didn't want to go in the bathroom and look in the mirror and say Bloody Mary five times because they said she'll pop out the mirror and cut you. It was the same thing with Candyman. But we never asked ourselves, why? Why a mirror? They tell you on Google, if you look it up, that a mirror just reflects light back to you. But that's a lot. It's a way deeper thing that's going on with a mirror because you have to understand that you have all these entities creating these alternate realities. Okay, You got mirrors. You can lose yourself inside of a mirror. All right. You got mirrors that actually when people go in the store, call them to the mirror. And you be thinking, like, oh, let me get that mirror. I had to get that mirror. But you don't know there's entities behind that silica saying that courts call you. A mirror is a magical thing, but it's, it's, it's low frequency. It's low frequency magic, though. All right. It's low frequency magic. And you got to understand that you are dealing with you're not looking at your real image when you're looking in the mirror. OK, you are not looking at your complete divine image of your most beautiful self. This is why most people look in the mirror, they get down, they want to be, they want more muscles, they want more muscles or they want to gain weight, they want to lose weight. They're not as happy with themselves as they could because they always in the goddamn mirror, not understanding that you have certain frequencies and beings that exist in that world. The mirror is a holographic realm. OK, it's a holographic realm. They even had a movie out called, um, you can go check it out, it's called Insidious. And in Insidious, the father went into the astral realm. And when he went into the astral realm, he was still in his house because that's how it looks in the astral realm. He left his body, went in his house, and, and, and went into the astral realm to try to go save his son. All right? When he went into the astral realm, he opened his eyes, he was in his house. He had to leave outside of his house so that he was, you know, walking through this astral realm trying to go find his son, fighting against these, these devils. All right? Well, it was a witch, if you want to call it that, or or a malevolent spirit, as I like to call them, that had been chasing him since he was a kid. Well, guess what? The malevolent spirit could never get his, get her hands on him because she yearned to live again. Remember, you have a lot of disembodied spirits and souls that yearn to live again, and they live behind this mirror realm, too. We like to call it the gray world. A lot of your dismember and disembodied, well, disembodied souls, right? They exist in what we like and what you know as the mirror realm. All right. And that's why in the movie Insidious, when he was when after he saved his son, and he was running back to his body so that he could come back to the physical plane. He got caught in what? The mirror. And he seen the lady that was chasing him and he started yelling at the lady, he started cussing the lady out. 
You know, the whole nine. 4,000 live viewers. Y'all came in late night with it. Let's give it up for University. I ain't thinking to be that many of y'all in here on the late night, but I see y'all in here. I love y'all like I love myself. We are one. Peace reflection. All right. Thank you. But uh, when in, in the movie Insidious, he was running back to his body to get back to, his, to the physical realm. And he got what? He got caught in the mirror. And when he seen her, she was just standing in the mirror looking at him. And he came to the mirror and he started yelling at her and yelling at her. And then she smiled at him. And then next thing you know, he was back in, this, in the physical realm again, again in his body. And you're like, oh, okay, that shit meant nothing. Until he went upstairs and the lady that was in charge of the, the spirit medium, she took a picture of him and seeing his nails was kind of pale. So she took a picture of him with the camera. And the whole time, the negative lady that was chasing him, the, the fallen entity, had made it back to the physical realm because she stole his body. She was able to steal his avatar by getting him to lock into the mirror. When she lock into, see, when she lock into the mirror, even when I, and I've been doing this a long time, even when I go into a mirror, I never stay, I never stay in it too long. Or when I look at myself in the mirror, I try not to get caught up in glancing and staring too long at myself. I try to look at certain body parts, look at my shirt. I try to keep it moving. If you lock yourself into a mirror and just stare into your own eyes in the mirror, you are not looking at yourself. That is, that is not you. That's an actual being on the other end of that world that's mimicking you. All right. And this is a this is a powerful thing that must be known and must be understood completely. All right. That when you are looking into a mirror, you are looking at fallen entities that are mimicking you. All right, and the, and the elites will never tell you that. The oppressors will never tell you that. That's why they got a mirror in every house, just like they got a goddamn TV in every house. They all go hand in hand, all right? Also, beings can enter into your home and into your aura field through your mirror. This is why, anciently, our ancestors, they wanted nothing to really do with mirrors. If you look at when, if you want to, because we wasn't really never enslaved like that anyway, but the, t the few of us that would get caught in going to slavery, we wasn't in no mirrors. We looking at the water. We want to see ourselves. We're going to look into a natural source, which is water. Water also gives you a reflection of yourself as well as metal. These are things that we place here on the planet naturally. A mirror isn't a natural thing, all right? It's a it's a holographic world designed to keep you trapped into the, into that mirror, all right? So what's a way of losing yourself in the mirror? You got a lot of be a lot of people that, like I said, that love looking in mirrors and they love mirrors. And they'll get these mirrors and they'll get obsessed with looking at themselves in the mirror. They'll be trying their clothes on all day, every day, just for the fucking hell of it. They don't even know why they're doing it, right? You got guys that go work out, now they in the mirror all night. You know what I'm saying? It's cool to get you one in, two in, but now they in there all night. You got, you got even, even our phones, they get that whole idea from their version of the mirror. And then what happened? It turns into a selfie because motherfucker love looking at themselves. And then now you all caught up in your image. All right. But when you when you're doing that, that's a form of what they like to call vanity. That's called vanity. Right. And I think we, we, we got away from that. But that was first spoken of in their Bible. Now, vanity is an actual fallen angel. It's an actual fallen angel. So remember I taught you all about a lot of these emotions are fallen angels. Okay, vanity is a fallen angel. You got all these spiritual forces that's posing as these emotions, posing as these as these bad habits. All right, so this is how they're able to get you. And then now you go into a form of narcissism. When you become narcissistic, now you're falling into a lower frequency because nar being narcissistic opens up the door to the ego. Now you get stuck and trapped in your ego. And now these entities are able to keep you at your lowest vibration. All right? At your lowest vibration. Um, this is why when you're talking about Bloody Mary, what was she? A negative force. The movie Candyman, what he represented? A negative force. And, they, and, and in some of them, you had to go to the mirror. In the movie Poltergeist, they had to go to the mirror. And you see beings trying to snatch her through the TV as well as snatch them through the mirror. When you, when you watch the movie Matrix, when Neo broke free from the, new, from, the, from the Matrix, when he was waking up in the new one, who tried to stop him? The analyst, the creator of the entire fake reality. And how did he try to stop Neo? He tried to pull him back into the Matrix through what though? Through the mirror. Through the mirror. Because you, in order to understand the power of the mirror, you have to understand what the mirror is made out of. 
It's made out of glass. And now you say, what is, what is glass made out of? The type of glass specifically that is used for mirrors is made out of silica sand. That's not regular sand. Silica sand is also a man-made construct, all right? So, and we see what silica sand does to metal. Aren't you metal? Don't forget, you are composed of entirely metal. All your bone marrow and bone, all your bones is metal. But because you're breathing in what? Oxygen, it rusts out the metal and now it becomes what we call it today, bone. But bone isn't, isn't weak. Bone is tough and very hard, right? It's hard to break a bone now. And that's at its lowest form. So imagine how strong you are when you, without no oxygen, that bone turns to that full antimantium type metal, which is where they get the story of Wolverine from. Okay? So when you have all these mirrors, definitely if you're not vibrating on a high frequency, you letting all type of demonic forces into your, or, or, the, or not, or satanic forces, I should say, into your aura, into your atmosphere. Right, and the mirror lies to you. The mirror lies to you, and the and mirrors actually talk to you. If you sit there with them close, if you sit there with them long enough, you'll see what I'm talking about. And if you sit in the mirror and stare at yourself long enough, you will see yourself move. You will see things take place in the mirror that don't really exist. And the rim is being shown back to you. You're like, oh well, I can see the wall behind me, so this mirror must just be reflecting what's behind me. That's what it's designed to make you think because the mirror is alive. It's a source of intelligence. Just like your, neuromel your neuromelanin that's inside of you is actually alive. Stop thinking when you're looking at a mirror, you just, it's just some glass. No, it's alive. It has intelligence, so it adapts to you. If you're in a, if you're in a, if you're in a room with a white wall with, with this on it, it's going to reflect that back to you to make you think, oh, this is what it was designed to do. This way is able to hide its true negative intent. Mirrors are very negative things. They are very negative things. Don't get me wrong. It's cool to have them. We, every, and that's why every bathroom comes with, comes with them. Every house comes with them. You, they all in your car. Right? But what, don't forget what you are as well. You are electricity. What restricts electricity? Glass. A mirror is a form of glass. Glass. Rubber. Plastic. And cloth. So this all goes together when we're talking about mirrors, all right? Some of the most powerful spell work is done involving mirrors. You ever heard of mirror mazes? These are real things. Remember the ancient spell? We used to watch, um, what was that? Not Cinderella. No. Snow White. Thank you, babe. Best wife ever. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the beautiful, most beautiful of, a, of them all? And the mirror will talk to her. Your mirror will talk to you the same way if you understand that it, that it is an it's a source of intelligence. But it's not working for our side. It's there to present to you a false reality of self. You are beautiful like you are. You are intelligent. You are beautiful like you are. But you look in that mirror and think differently. The mirror reminds you of the matrix. You get in that mirror, you're like, oh, I'm naked. I need to put some cloth on. Now you're trying to put your cloth on. You're like, oh, well. This cough got a stain on it. Now you put it all down and go get something else. People spend hours, energy cycles in front of mirrors. Never happy with themselves. Oh, I need to do, get my tummy tuck. I need to do a few more push-ups. All I need to do, you got to understand that nothing positive comes from looking into a mirror. And if you don't think I'm lying, try not looking at it one day. Get up, wash your ass, put your stuff on, and don't even look at it. So much pressure to be relieved. Because you really compete with yourself when you're looking in the mirror anyway. But it gets deeper. On a spiritual level, you have so many deities. Like I said, these red genies that live within these mirrors. The, the mirror is a holographic world. The mirror is a is a is a is a world where disembodied souls can reside along with some of the most powerful fallen angels and some of these, and these genies. <clears throat> without being in the astrals, without leaving this physical realm. Also, mirrors have take on bodies. So remember, the, the body can house over a thousand spirits. I don't know if you knew that. Your avatar can house over a thousand different spirits within it. So a mirror is a house for all these different negative spirits. And you don't know what's coming through. 
and you'll lose your whole self in the mirror. And it'll be a whole other entity that they took over you. In the real you, stuck in the mirror world now, the holographic world, the illusionary world, the parallel universe to this one. And me clearly, the parallel universe to this one. You are powerful beyond measure. You are a divine being. What does the mirror reflect back? Light. What are you? Electricity, which is the highest form of light. So if a mirror can reflect back light to you, let's break it down. Electricity. How do you think it got the electricity to reflect back to you? It's still the harvest, the life force of others. This is why some of y'all, like I said, when you go in the store, mirrors will call you. When you're dealing with a mirror, understand what you're dealing with. You get in there, look at your clothes, you and get up out of there. I'm getting lost in the mirror and I'll want to mirror for hours. Because a part of yourself. My wife do that. She beautiful as she is, but let her go look in the mirror. Oh, let me get these. You see how the mirror lying to her? Oh, the top, babe, get out your face. She ain't thinking about her face if it wasn't no mirror that to, to give her a reflection back. Or let's, let's remove the word reflection. Lie to her. It's a saying about a mirror. What you see is what you get. But that's a lie. And if you even think about what they taught you about mirrors, they tell you you're never looking at your real reflection anyway. They tell you the mirror, what you the reflection you see in the mirror, the time it takes the light to reflect it back to your eyes, that's how you looked 10 minutes ago. What type of sorcery is that? This is the way I looked 10 minutes ago. I should be able to look in this mirror right now and see who I, how I look right now. But we never think about these things. Meanwhile, you got white races, the hierarchy, that do spell work. And they absorb our frequencies through mirrors. They watch you through mirrors. That's not no movie when they show you all uh, the mirror in the police station. Be a two-way mirror. You look in the mirror, you just see you. On the other end, it's a whole other person watching you that you can't even see. That's real. And that's not just when it comes to dealing with interrogation. That's why I got this pink candle lit for protection. This represents divine cosmic love, which is going to always eradicate any negative forces. Because that's what we got mirrors in the house. There's mirrors everywhere. They put them in your bathrooms, your car, your house. But understand what a mirror is. Understand the power it possesses. It will possess you. Y'all know I'm not lying. You probably never thought about that. You probably never paid attention to it because that's how life is. When we don't pay attention to things, that's right in front of our face. You think they got mirrors in everybody's house because they... They want you to look your best. If they wanted you to look your best, they wouldn't feed us pork and beef. If they wanted you to look your best, they wouldn't have lied to us. They ain't never gave a fuck about you. So what makes you think they care about you when they put the mirror in your house? You need to ask yourself that. Why are we surrounded by so many mirrors everywhere we go? And then if you look at yourself in the crib, you know how the fuck you look? Fuck you need one in your car for. As soon as you flip the visors down, there go more mirrors for you. They could have gave you the light. Don't say, oh, it's for the light. They can give you the light without the mirror. Ask yourself, why is this? Electrical being, 90 to be. Because they casting those frequencies out into you at all times. You got the mirror, then you got the glass. Then you in a metal car. With rubber all in the car. 
cloth in the seats. How do people act that know they're beautiful? We call them stuck up, don't. But they wouldn't be acting stuck up if they weren't looking in the mirrors. She been in the mirror all day. She just knows she fine. Now you can't tell her nothing. Now she coming out acting mean toward people, snotty, insulting others, other goddesses who she feeling up to her level. Now what is she doing? She vibrating low now when she start acting like that. Mirror ain't never did nothing good for you. But a lot took you. Now who is that line of your soul behind the mirror? It's not you. That's not you on the other end. You is right here. So who the fuck is that in the air? Ask yourself that. No, you know, that's me. No, you right here. You ain't got two bodies, you got one. So who the fuck is that in the mirror? Like Michael Jackson said, I'm talking to the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. You thought he was talking about his damn self. He's not talking about himself. Michael Jackson was very powerful, very in tune. He put it all in his songs. He know exactly what's going on with mirrors and what mirrors I truly used to do. Who is that in the mirror? Who is that? It's not you. You're right here. Your world is right here. So how is it that whatever is going on in that mirror is mimicking, it's a person that looks just like you and they got the same backdrop you got? And to make you not think, they tell you it's your reflection. How does your reflection? But shape-shifting is a real thing. That's why now it's getting out there that shape-shifting is real because of the reptilians. The truth about the draconian reptilians has been coming out. Like, it's been out there, but nobody believed it. But the lab now since we're in quantum energies and with the kundalini energy is rising, we remember it. So the world, the planet is remembering again. Everybody waking up. So everybody open to this draconian reptilian race. And then you got familiar with shape-shifting. But shape-shifting been going on. Ask the man in the mirror. That's the shape shifter right there. You will lose your soul in a mirror. Many have done it. It's a very powerful vortex. And it also acts as an interdimensional portal. Most portals lead to other universes and galaxies. The mirror is the only portal that leads right here into your realm. Or you can walk into that realm. Ask yourself, why do they use mirrors so much for horror movies? What do they know that you don't know? Don't be fooled. We rising now. And then they want you be they want you to be scared of that world. To the point that if you break a mirror, what they tell you? Seven years bad luck. See I say work. He makes sure you don't destroy none of his none of his realms. That's that's what that was all about. So if you ever did realize what a mirror really was, and you get some nuts to break it or not have it, you I ain't breaking that. You get seven years bad luck if you do that. Ain't no such thing as bad luck, nigga. You get what you give. You give out good, you get good. You give out bad, it comes back to you in some sort of way. That energy is good. That you, the same energy you put out there, it must be reciprocated back to you. So once again, I ask you to ask yourself, who is that in the mirror? It's not you. It's an entity 
shape shifting into you. Mirrors are able to pull all type of energy from, from this world. As well as push energy out there. Remember, it's made out of what type of glass? Silica sand. Which is made out of a certain type of quartz. Now, what do quartz do? If you, we know about crystals a little bit. Quartz push out energy and pull in energy. And the quartz is the most powerful crystal when it comes to amplifying energy and intent. Ask you to ask yourself, who is that in the motherfucking mirror? Why do they use mirror so much for horror movies? Why is vanity considered a sin? And you can't be vain without being in the mirror and falling in love with yourself. And why is it considered seven years bad luck if you break the mirror? It's supposed to just be glass after all. But when I drop a glass bottle, I smash a glass bottle. Niggas at the bar go, shh. You know when a nigga finna stand off, niggas, they grab their bottle, they, shh. Now they, you know what I'm saying, they trying to poke some shit. You know what I'm saying? They, with their little glass bottle. Why is that not bad luck? But if you break, that's glass, ain't it? But if you break a mirror, seven years bad luck. No, somebody's trying to stop you from Realizing what's going on here. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the prettiest queen of them all? It's a form of sorcery. Witchcraft. That's why I said it's a very powerful download. Because... Once you're aware of that, you know how to handle it. You know what it is. It's like a Ouija board. That's why you want pure energy. You got good energy in your house, them forces ain't gonna come out that mirror in, in your house. They'll stay in that mirror. Every time you go in that mirror, they gonna try to lure you and they gonna shape shift into you and show you you and, you and show, do all that. But you look, look what you got to look. You brush your teeth. Look, do, do. Don't start locking into your own eyes because that's not you. Don't start putting all your energy into it. Keep your energy pure in your circle. Because a mirror represents a body full of genies, malevolent beings, fallen angels. Disembodied souls. Place where the devils can congregate at. And go unnoticed. When you watch movies. Once again, back to these scary, mo scary movies. Why are they always using mirrors? We know all that. We know the famous saying they like to use in movies with the mirror. Say the, say the house haunted or something. Somebody be looking. They got Amy in the bathroom. So they put their head down. They look up. Somebody standing behind them in the mirror. Don't be fooled. Be aware. Be informed. Be enlightened. Of all the tricks that have been used to try to harness our energy. No different than the television and the, t and the cell phone. I'm going to try to meditate on that. But with that being said, I will see y'all tomorrow in class. We in class all this month. We, we, lit on the, we lit with the deep downloads all this month. Peace to the gods and goddesses of planet Kama. Let this candle continue to burn out. I claim no negative energy. Why discussing this? Why discussing mirrors? Because to discuss it on this level, you know, it's giving power to the mirrors. It's in my goddamn house. Do they have intelligence? We have natural reflectors, metals, water. That's, those are the real mirrors.
The mirrors are the place. Hall of the devils. Of the tricksters. Of the tricksters reflection. So. When you look at the etymology of mirror, it comes from mire in Latin. And they tell you, the early senses believe that this word also it comes from the fact that a mirror is a crystal used in magic and a person deserving imitation. So there you have it. That's the etymology of mirror. A mirror is nothing more than a magical crystal being used for negative frequencies. You didn't think that. Okay. Think the mirror harmless. It's not. Peace to the God that got us the planet cop. Now we rise. One. I leave as I come. I will see y'all tomorrow in class. Right back here.